Hi, it's Michael Wild back here again with another video and today we're going to be going through UVing this model of a camera that I made about four or five years ago now. So this can be the first part in a multi-part series going through the texturing process of this camera, not only in Mari but also in Substance, so you can use either or, so there's going to be a video for both, hopefully. So the model is also going to be available for free like I did with the Goldfish on my Gumroads. I'm also hoping to release all of the unedited video files so you can see it all from beginning to end along with the source files. Hopefully I need to work out if I can actually realistically do that. Also, if you haven't subscribed on Twitch, I've been doing a lot more streaming these days, which is gonna be the next project, which is this realistic kind of squirtle. If you wanna follow along with that, then you can watch on Twitch or you can subscribe on here for when I do a more edited actual tutorial version of it. Cool. So first up, let's go through some UV and keyboard shortcuts I'm gonna use a lot in this video. So if you shift and right click with an edge selected, then that will move and sew two UV edges together. That's super important. It's the one I probably use the most. If you have an edge selected and you shift and right click, then that will cut the edge and then you can move and sew it somewhere else. So here you can see me moving it. If you right click and when you are selecting stuff, you can change between UVs, edges, faces, and all the different bits and pieces. And that's super useful to quickly do on the fly. And if you have a selection already made, like here I have some UVs selected and I wanna convert that to faces or edges that I can then cut out, then you can control and right click and that will let you do that. So these are super important. I'm gonna be doing it on the fly. I'll try and put the occasional reminder when I do do it on screen. And then finally, if you have some UV selected and you shift and right click, you can use the optimize or the unfold option. And that will basically kind of smooth your UVs out. It's not perfect by any means. So sometimes here I have to press it multiple times and I'll select different bits of the mesh until it kind of fits into place. And that's what I'm doing here. By pressing G on the keyboard, that repeats the last action. Cool. So first up, I've applied a UV checker tile texture to this shader and I've just tiled it across four times and now I'm deleting the UVs of this flash gun. We're going to work just on the flash gun in this video. The camera is already kind of done. This is an old model I did about six years ago so I've just deleted the UVs because they weren't great and then I'm just going to automatic UV one piece at a time and start stitching the UVs together. So I'm going to get the scale off the model that I'm already happy with so I'm going to select the body of this camera asset to get the scale of that and I just clicked get from that object and then I'm gonna set the other object in the textile density options of the UV toolkit menu. Cool, and then I'm just gonna move that across to a different UDIM. If you don't know about UDIMs, I've already done a separate video on them, so I'm not gonna to touch them on this, but I'm just gonna move it across to its own UDIM tile because I'm gonna be working with this entire asset of the flash gun on a separate UDIM tile. And then I'm just gonna rotate it so that this UV checker is faced up. You'll notice me do that a lot in this video. I wanna make sure the UVs are always in exactly the same direction. This is super helpful when it comes to texturing for tile textures and stuff like that. So we started with a really easy piece of geo, just the front plane of the flash. And now I'm gonna actually get UVing properly. So I've automatic UV'd this object and now I'm just merging and sewing the main UV faces of this kind of barrel piece. So that's the, the move and sew edge that I'm using there. I'm making sure to select the edges that I want to merge together. And if I've got any that I've selected that I don't want, then I just use control to unselect those edges and shift to select more. So UVing quite simply is just unwrapping your object to a 2D flat plane so that you can texture it as well as possible without any distortion. So on this round object, I've split up that round section of the cylinder so that I can just cut that open. And then these two edges of the object I'm gonna put into two separate UV kind of islands is what they call them. So here I'm just merging all those bits on the end together, I'm moving and sewing those edges together. And then now I'm just gonna unfold them so that they are a little bit nicer. And I can basically see with this UV checker where my UVs are and aren't working. Again, I'm rotating this island just so it sits upright. If there's any distortion on the object, that means your texture will be distorted potentially. Using things like projection in Mari or triplanar in Substance, you can get around distortion, but ideally you wanna minimize it as much as possible, if completely. So that's one thing that I'll be doing a lot in this video. I'll be making sure that if there is distortion, then I'm fixing that. So there I just use the unfold and the optimize functions to make sure that there wasn't distortion. Now I'm just rotating it so it's all facing upwards. So the most important things when you're UVing are on screen now, distortion, uniform scale, where you put your seams and the UDIMs and layout. If you do hand a texture artist sloppy UVs with any of these issues, then I mean, realistically they can fix them, but they're not gonna like you, so don't. So why is scale important when it comes to UVs? Basically, if you are using tile textures across your object, if the scale of your UV is different, then a brick texture you're using on one bit of a building that you're texturing will be completely different to another bit. So by having a consistent scale across your object, then you make sure that 
you mitigate any problems when it comes to texturing. So that's really, really important to do. So just rotating to make sure that everything's facing upwards. Again, that's to do with tiling textures because you want to make sure everything's facing upwards so that the tiling texture applies the same over every UV island. So here I'm just making sure that that cylinder section was also upwards and I'm just fitting it all nicely into the edge of a UDIM tile there. And I'm just, just moving it across to the other bit that I've already textured and I'm gonna put everything on that UDIM eventually. So now I've finished that piece off, then I'm gonna start on the next bit. So I've just auto UV'd it as a base, which I usually do. There are other ways to UV something like cylindrical mapping or planar mapping, but this is my go-to most of the time. So I've got this central piece here that I'm gonna start on first. I'm gonna to need to rotate it eventually, but the first thing I wanna focus on are these bevels that I've got and the extrudes here, because they're gonna give me issues because I know that if I try and merge it all together, I'm gonna to get distortion. I've done it so many times that I just know that's a fact. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut those pieces apart that I'm gonna merge with it. And that way the corners will not be all joined together and then I won't get distortion. So I've just cut those and then I'm using the move and sew edge function to then attach them to here. This really does just come with practice knowing how UVs will react. So when you first do it, you it is kind of trial and error, but try cutting pieces and then relaxing bits to see how that affects it and if you lose distortion where you previously had it. So now I'm just gonna rotate that piece. So when you auto UV an object, sometimes it will merge bits of your mesh together that you didn't want connected. So what I've done here is one of these kind of bevels, this extrude on this middle section got merged to another bit. So I've just cut it away and then I've moved and sewn it to this piece that I'm kind of setting up in a different UV island. And now I'm selecting another edge and this top one as well and I'm moving and sewing. And you can see here these corners have got cuts in them. I haven't merged those side edges. And that's because, again, like I was saying, I've done this so many times that when you start to merge the corners of sections like that, you will get distortion. So I'm trying to avoid that. So here I've got an inside edge on a bit of the mesh that you're never really going to see, but when I automatic UV'd it, it separated it into a separate island. So I'm just breaking that up so I can move and sew it to different parts of other islands. So why am I doing this? Well, it can be a bit untidy to have loads of different UV islands, hundreds of them. So when you first automatic UV something, that's often what you'll get. But distortion really does come first. So if you do need to split something because it's heavily distorted, then I would recommend doing that. That said, this is an inside edge, so you're probably not gonna see it, but it's just good workflow practices to make sure that you're making that tidy and that all of your mesh is done well. Because who knows, maybe if this is a mesh for a film that is gonna be exploded, that edge might end up getting seen because the mesh gets blown apart and stuff like that. So yeah, it's just good to make sure that all of your mesh is tidy and you're UVing as well as possible, even in bits that you think might not get seen. So fast forwarding to another piece of geo here, and I'm just starting to move and sew this bit together. So here, this bit of the mesh, I would have expected to unfold quite nicely, and yet I'm still getting some distortion on this UV island that you can see. So I was getting a bit frustrated with that. So one way to get around that I found is I actually cut up this UV island, even though I knew it was all gonna be joined, and then I just took this curved section of the mesh and I unfolded that separately. And by doing so and not doing all the UVs at once, I found that gave me a much nicer result which I just wasn't getting before. And then I've just oriented those shells and I've just sewn that back together and now I've got undistorted UVs. So sometimes it can help to deconstruct your UVs and then pop them back together again. So like I said earlier, this model was done like five or six years ago when I wasn't the best at modeling. And now that I've come back to texture it and I'm pressing three on my keyboard to smooth, you can see these some of these edges are really jumping around and that's because I haven't put in enough supporting edge loops on the model. This is a really big issue. If you're just texturing and you get given a model that is like this, then it means that your UVs will also slide and you'll get stretching. I've had it at work before where modelers just haven't quality checked a few edges and it gives me issues like this. So either you have to send it back to them or in this instance, I've got to do it myself because I didn't model it correctly. So what I'm doing just for time's sake is I'm just throwing in some supporting edge loops and then that way you can see now when I smooth it, the difference that makes the lines basically just don't jump around as much. So that's one way to check is if you press three and then you press one, then you press three, you just jump backwards and forwards. How much do your lines jump? If they jump too much, then your textures will also be jumping the same amount. So you'll see it smoothing and unsmoothing and that's because I'm doing that check. And where I'm seeing a lot of jumping, I'm just going in adding edge loops. Obviously you can't always just add an edge loop because that will potentially destroy curvature in other bits of your mesh. So what you don't see me doing here is correcting that because in some bits I have done exactly that and it's ruined my model. 
So I'm using things like edit edge flow, stuff like that to correct it. Also adding in extra edge loops will make your model a lot sharper. So if you don't want that, then you need to go in and actually properly model that. In this instance, it wasn't too much of an issue and I can use bevels and stuff like that or editing edge flow like I do on this line here to kind of add a nice bit of curvature back into it. So here I've got some extra inside edge UVs that I know aren't gonna be seen. Also, if I try and connect them to other bits of the mesh, I know I'm probably gonna get distortion. So in this instance, I am just gonna leave them separated. Since it's only a few, I don't really mind too much. It's not a huge issue. Other texture artists may disagree, but that's my personal opinion. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and position them in this instance to try and make the most out of the space, which I really like to do, then what I'm gonna do is I am actually gonna scale them down ever so slightly. Like I was saying earlier, if you scale down UVs, then that does mean that tile textures or anything that you use procedurally will appear slightly larger or smaller depending on the scale across your object. But since these aren't gonna be seen and I'm only doing it ever so slightly, I don't think it's a huge issue. Granted, I know that goes against the advice that I just gave, but it is, a lot of this is contextual. Like all of you being, you will do different approaches for different objects. That said, some people will probably have opinions that that's cheating and in a way it kind of is, but in this way, I just get to optimize my UV layout a bit more and I, rather than taking up space on the outside, I can pop those bits on a gap that wasn't being used. So here's a little screw that I made that doesn't have a back face. So what I can do with this is I can literally just select all of the edges and if I move and sew them and then unfold, 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 and then relax, relax, or optimize, whatever it's called these days, I think it used to be called unfold, then it basically does the UVs for me really quickly. Also with these pieces, I can afford to be slightly more lax because they are so small, distortion isn't gonna show as much. And this is the case with hero assets versus kind of smaller props. You don't have to be quite as delicate. That said, it is important to kind of know the basics and know how to do this all the time. But sometimes you do just need to get UVs out quickly. So this screw, I've actually got a lot of them. So what do you do if you've got objects that have got exactly the same topology that you don't want to UV multiple times? Well, that's where this beautiful tool called Transfer Mesh Attributes comes in. And basically, if you select UV sets and topology, then what it will do is if you select the object that has the UVs first and then the object you want to transfer to, and then apply that, then it will transfer your UVs. You just need to make sure that you delete the history afterwards because it kind of keeps that information. So if you change the first object's UVs, the second objects will still change. And so what I did there is I just kept selecting them, pressing G, select the new one, press G, and then that quickly transferred those UVs that I just made to all of these screws that are exactly the same. And then what I'm doing is because they are now overlapping, because those UVs will have been transferred to exactly the same space in the UV grid, and I don't want overlapping UVs, then I'm just one at a time moving them away from each other into a nice kind of grid. I could have used the layout function, which basically any UV shells that you have selected, it will kind of lay them out quite nicely in your UV space. But because there's only a few of these, I didn't want to go through that and it can be a bit fiddly. Sometimes it scales up when you don't want it to. So this way I knew I kept the scale and I could just move them because there's only a few objects by hand. So yeah, I'm just going to move those UVs across to the UDIMs that I'm using for this flash gun. And you can see we're slowly getting there. And this object is very clean. Everything is in the correct orientation. I've just got these last little few bits to do and then it's kind of ready to texture really. So the last thing I need to do is this final little ring piece that's got a lot of little bevel details on it. So I'm just gonna isolate that so I can see it by itself. And you can see I'm smoothing it there and the borders of the, the mesh jumped a lot. So that's because I don't have enough supporting edge loops. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the central vertex of this top and this bottom circle piece. And I'm just gonna convert that to faces and then extrude in ever so slightly. And that's just a quick and cheap way to get supporting edges on a circle. And then I'm just gonna re-UV it automatically. And I'm not super happy with that because I've got these little bits on the edge and I'm, I do try and move and sew and see how that gives me, but I just don't like it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select those central vertexes again, and then I'm gonna go two faces and that'll select all the outside ones. And then I'm gonna automatically UV just those pieces that I have now selected. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give me nice circles for just those bits. And then I'm gonna move those across and then basically now I can select all these other bits and automatically UV them. So sometimes I don't automatically UV the entire object because it can actually be useful to do bits at different times. So now I've selected all those, I'm gonna unselect those edges and merge and sew all of those. And now I've got this kind of almost like ribbon of all these outside edges. 
The problem is when I try and fold in that because they're all joined, it's not working. So I'm gonna select one edge, just cut it, and then I'm gonna unfold it. And now it's laid out really nicely for me. And I'm just gonna use the Orient Shell option there in the UV toolkit to get it so that it's sitting exactly flat. So, and then I scaled the UVs down and voila, it's done. So that was just a nice quick way to do a cylindrical surface there. I could have used the cylindrical mapping, but I just knew this would be quicker and I'd get a result kind of done in exactly the same way. So I was happy with that. So now's me just sped up moving the UDIMs across. Basically, I'm making this camera in six UDIMs so that it can be used in Mari non-commercial so that when I do release this model for free that people can use it in the non-commercial version of Mari. Um, so yeah, this model is kind of done now and it's ready to go into the texturing process, which will be the next video, hopefully. It's gonna be texturing it in Mari and then also texturing it from scratch in Substance. So how you can use both programs to approach a hard surface asset, that's the plan. If you enjoyed this, then subscribe to the YouTube and you can see when those videos are coming out. And when I finally release that model, it's not up yet, but it will be eventually along, hopefully with the source files and stuff like that. Um, yeah, cool. Catch me on Twitch with live streams for more organic stuff rather than just hard surface stuff. And thanks for watching. I've been Michael Wilde. Best of luck, whatever you're doing in 3D.